The unicorn lowered her head until her horn touched the lock of the harpy's cage. The door did not swing open, and the iron bars did not thaw into starlight, but the harpy lifted her wings, and the four sides of the cage fell slowly away and down, like the petals of some great flower waking at night. And out of the wreckage the harpy bloomed, terrible and free, screaming, her hair swir swinging like a sword, the moon withered and fled. The unicorn heard herself cry out, not in terror, but in wonder. Oh, you're like me! She reared joyously to meet the harpy's swoop, and her horn leaped up into the wicked wind. The harpy struck once, missed, and swung away, her wings clanging and her breath warm and stinking. She burned overhead, and the unicorn saw herself reflected on the harpy's bronze breast, and felt the monster shining from her own body. So they circled one another like a double star, and under the shrunken sky there was nothing real but the two of them. The harpy laughed with delight, and her eyes turned the color of honey. The unicorn knew that she was going to strike again. The harpy folded her wings and fell like a star, not at the unicorn, but beyond her, passing so close that a single feather drew blood from the unicorn's shoulder, bright claws reaching for the heart of Mommy Fortuna who was stretching out her own sharp hands as though to welcome the harpy home. Not alone, the witch howled triumphantly at the both of them. You could never have freed yourselves alone. I held you. Then the harpy reached her, and she broke like a dead stick and fell. The harpy crouched on her body, hiding it from sight, and the bronze wings turned red. The unicorn turned away. Close by, she heard a child's voice telling her that she must run, she must run. It was the magician. His eyes were huge and empty, and his face, always too young, was collapsing into childhood as the unicorn looked at him. No, she said, come with me. The harpy made a thick, happy sound that melted the magician's knees, but the unicorn said again, come with me, and together they walked away from the midnight carnival. The moon was gone. But to the magician's eyes, the unicorn was the moon, cold and white and very old, lighting his way to safety or to madness. He followed her, never once looking back, even when he heard the desperate scrambling and skidding of heavy feet, the boom of bronze wings, and Rook's interrupted scream. He ran, the unicorn said. You must never run from anything immortal. It attracts their attention. Her voice was gentle and without pity. Never run, she said. Walk slowly, and pretend to be thinking of something else. Sing a song, say a poem, do your tricks. But walk slowly, and she may not follow. Walk very slowly, magician. So they fled across the night together, step by step, and the tall man in black and the horned white beast. The magician crept as close to the unicorn's light as he dared, for beyond it moved hungry shadows, the shadows of the sounds that the harpy made as she destroyed the, what little there was to destroy of the midnight carnival. But another sound followed them long after these had faded, followed them into morning on a strange road, the tiny, dry sound of a spider weeping. <laughs>